goodness. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. Oh, hi. Welcome to 10 Minute Talk Show. How's it going? I'm standing over here, weirdly, in a place I don't usually stand because we got something a little different going on. We're doing 10 Minutes With because we got a juicy guest today. Yeah, 10 Minutes With. <laughs> All true. Uh, I'm going to say this, uh, I'm going to say the human condition hasn't really changed in centuries. We all have the basic same wants and needs and everything else, but for some reason we remain at this time possibly the most politically divided that we've been in our entire lifetime. I'm not sure why that is. So today we got somebody who isn't exactly left, isn't exactly fully right, isn't exactly fully blue or red or even orange for that matter. I don't know where this guy lands, but he is, for lack of a better term, a garnish of hope at Queen's Park. Please welcome the leader of the Green Party of Ontario. It's Mike Schreiner, everybody. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Good to see you. So good to see yeah, you. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. Good to be here tonight. I'm so glad you're here. I'm, I'm delighted that you responded to my email. Thank you for that. I respond to most emails, I, believe it or not. I know this. Uh, we wanted to actually have you on uh, before uh, the election happened, right. but you, but things were going so well for you. Things were really cooking, and you were, and we just didn't work it out. But you're here now after the election, which is more impressive because everybody wants to get a piece of you now because you won. That's why. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, I, I do want to talk about election night first because it sure. was you were kind of like a ray of sunshine in the night because <laughs> Doug Ford won, and he won. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, well, what's your opinion on this? Show some respect <laughs> for your premier, everybody. <laughs> that would be weird if I took a hard turn yeah, and I was like, this is Whoa. all about uh, getting getting four more years for Doug. No. Uh, so we were kind of bummed out that night and, you know, Doug won and we were all kind of like, seriously, we're doing Trump uh, 2.0, are you joking? And then we were all like, but Mike Schreiner won. Mike won. We're going to be okay, everybody. Everything's going to be great. We'll, we'll be fine. You'll see. You'll see. And so you were kind of a beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. uh, did you feel that? Did you feel that joy of like, oh, a green got a seat. How glorious. Did you feel that that night? Well, I felt a lot of joy. Sure. And uh, it was great for Guelph. Like, yes. Really, you know what? You don't thank me. Thank Guelph. <laughs> yes. The people of Guelph delivered hope for it, Ontario on election a, night. It's one of the most eco-friendly cities in Canada, and it's a fantastic syllable. It's the best I've place always to said live. that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said that Guelph should have a better name. Like, like it's such a wonderful town. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. The people are amazing. But it's got that that harsh kind Guelph. of viscous, yeah. you know, Guelph. You know, it's got that kind of like something dropping into into water. Mm -hmm. Like it's got like you've just taken some like a piece of dough and you've dropped it. it doesn't sound You're not good. Not dissing Guelph, are you? I'm not dissing Guelph. Okay. My point okay. is okay. the people I was, I was get angry deserve a sec. better name <laughs> than Guelph. Is well, it's my known point. as a royal city, eh? Well, yeah. There we go. It's 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 real. You know, I like Guelph. I like saying Guelph, Obviously. but if you don't like saying Guelph, say Royal City. <laughs> Royal, there you go. People won't know where I'm going. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to Royal City this go day. Go to the Royal City. People are like, where are you going? I I'm going to Guelph. Oh, okay, I get what that is. I guess. So, uh, but no, but seriously, did you? I mean, there was there was an influx and like uh, just a swell of enthusiasm. You were one of the biggest stories of the night on election mm -hmm. night. I mean, you were on the inside looking out. D did did you feel that sort of weight on your shoulders at all? You know what? So much was happening, I didn't have time to think about it. And right, it really right, right. didn't even sink in until a few weeks later anyway. <laughs> right. But I was just there. Like, there were so many media there. So many people wanted a piece of me. Yeah. So I was just trying to make myself available to as many people as I could and thinking about what I wanted to say to people because sure. I knew it was a historic moment and I wanted to deliver the right remarks. The first one in Ontario. First green seat in the Queen's Park. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. first one. <laughs> and that's, yeah. You know what? And the fourth, t the first time there's been a fourth party at Queens Park since the 1940s. Are you serious? Yeah, we are in really uncharted territory was it, here. Was it the Whig Party? <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> a, that's a deep. Cut. You have no idea how funny that is. If you were over 78, you wow, would know. you'd be falling out yeah, of your chair. You <laughs> the Whig Party. Oh, this guy's so topical. Uh, <laughs> it's Whig with an H. Trust me, it's hysterical. If you're my grandmother, uh, so it was, yeah. it was actually the Communist Party. Really? But but under a different oh. name, something like the People's Labor Party or something. Like oh, that. okay. Yeah. Well, it's funny because a lot of people actually think that's who you are. Well, I'm about right? as far from a communist as you'll ever ever be. That's what I mean. Like people have all these misconceptions about what the Green Party is and what they stand for. What are your favorites? What are your favorite misconceptions about who the Greens actually are? Like, because I know you yeah, yeah. you hear it all the time. Well, what I what I hear is I like to hug trees, and, and <laughs> right? I do like hugging trees. I mean, it's not bad. So not a myth. Not a myth. Yeah. So, all right. Okay, that, one's, that one's true. Uh, I only wear Birkenstocks. Which I actually okay. don't own Birkenstocks. <laughs> are you? I don't know if they're booing Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks or booing are booing my shoes. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a very uh, 
the, feisty audience. It is a feisty audience. Yes. That we smoke lots of pot, which <laughs> right. I, you know what? I'm all for legalization of cannabis, but I personally don't use myself. So that's there you fine. Go. That's fine. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, <laughs> you lost another person. <laughs> lost another person. So you're over losing there. the Birkenstock demographic and, and the pot and smokers. The pot smokers. Not great. But hey, you know I'm all for Bir Birkenstocks and the pot smokers. So <laughs> it's it's big, not my thing. Eh? Big Venn diagram there. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. So, what, but so I, I think we're getting through those stereotypes. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm working hard to do that. Eh? I mean, some people think of us only as activists, but right. you know, I'm a longtime small business owner. So you right. know, business people can be greens as well. Well, the other thing is that a lot of your, your, your fiscal uh, platforms also often line up with uh, blue and red. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the thing, a lot, a lot of thing, a lot of people don't realize that is that it's like when you're fiscally, you're kind of all over the place, and it's sort of a logic-based system rather than uh, like it's like is that a good idea or is that a bad idea? Well, then we're in favor of it. Like there's a sort of a pragmatic thing with the greens that a yes. lot of people don't really know. Well, we like to put evidence before ideology. Unfortunately, <laughs> right. our premier likes to put ideology before evidence. You're not wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you've been agitating him uh, quite a bit, which I'm enjoying thoroughly. <laughs> oh man, I'm enjoying. Uh, uh, very recently, you actually got people up on their feet in Queens Park. Mm -hmm. uh, could you could you walk us through that because uh, it, it, it was cool? Like it was it was about climate change. You took right. a firm stance for climate change. Uh, walk us through what it means and, and how mm -hmm. it all went down. Well, first of all, I was asking the conservatives why they don't believe in market mechanisms anymore. Right. I always thought conservatives believed in markets, but obviously they don't because all pollution pricing is is a market mechanism to help us solve the climate crisis, right. the biggest crisis we face. Mm -hmm. And the conservatives vote against that. I don't understand why. So then I thought, well, okay, if they're going to vote against that, then I'm going to put forward a motion to have an emergency debate about the climate crisis. It's the biggest challenge we face. The IPCC report was horrifying, mm -hmm. and we only have a few years to solve this crisis. Right. And they shouted me down, unfortunately, because they don't even want to talk about the climate crisis. That's right. Yeah, and you're you're one guy, you know, uh, you're one guy right now, and uh, and I do want to talk about uh, your influence, because I think we're seeing a bit of the Shriner effect out <laughs> east, because three more Greens got elected out in New Brunswick. New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. So that's three Greens in one province. At, mm -hmm. yeah, right. And you know what and I mean? Like 10 across the country now. And 10 across the country. So people said Greens couldn't be elected in first-past-the-post right. the post voting systems. We have 10 in Canada now. Yeah, 10 Greens in the party. So that, in, the, in the country. So that's in the country. Yeah. It's good. It's... I, I think it's good for democracy because it, it paints a better mosaic of what Canada is. And mm -hmm. I also think uh, you're challenging people on, on where left and right lies, which I think is so important mm -hmm. and so crucial. Because uh, we see 77 blue seats in there. 77 blue seats? 76. 76, 76 okay. blue seats in there. And, uh, and I know for a fact, and I know because I know some people that actually work there, I know that they're gritting their teeth because Doug Ford is their boss. <laughs> I know. And there, and there they are in Queen's Park going, mm -hmm. yeah, he's great. Good idea you know and it's so infuriating and mm -hmm. I happen to know that all there's also some of that happening with the NDPs as well mm -hmm. on the orange team mm -hmm. not everybody is necessarily lining up with Andrea and, mm -hmm. and we know for sure that not everybody's lining up with Doug so my point is is like how do we get past this chasm over divide how mm -hmm. do we get over this because it's bad it makes for bad policy it makes you shout down good ideas Absolutely. like happen yeah. with you and it makes you endorse ideas that are bad for and you vote against your own interests mm -hmm. so where where's your head at to get us through this to cut through this mm -hmm. haze of, di mm -hmm. of, div of division well first of all people need to realize only 40% of the people in Ontario voted for Doug Ford right. so he may have 100% of the power but he only got 40% of the votes right, and likewise right. when Kathleen Wynne was had 100% of the power she only had 38% of the vote right so part of the problem is that our voting system doesn't reflect the democratic will of Canadians right, right, right. and so if we move to proportional representation where the parliament reflected how people actually voted that would start to reduce the partisanship because mm -hmm. right now we're all f people are fighting over a small percentage of the yeah. vote instead of actually standing up for principle for what they believe in uh, and and instead of working together like when you have a uh, PR system, it forces parties to work together, which is what you see in Europe happening, right. r rather than what we have here, which is winner take all, and you just fight, fight, fight for every, every last vote. Right, right. So that's part of it. I also believe we should have parliamentary reform. So I've actually, I'm a part of a group of uh, a liberal, a conservative, and a green. We're hoping to have an NDP member as well. We formed a parliamentary reform caucus to talk about ways in which parliament itself can be reformed to make it less hyper-partisan. See, this is what I'm talking about. And everybody wins. Conservatives win. Liberals Absolutely. win. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. And more, most importantly, we win because we have a better representation of us. The garnish of hope is Mike Schreiner of the Green Party of Ontario. One more time for Mike Schreiner, everybody. Hey, Jake. That's 10 Minutes With. Thank you, folks. Good night. <laughs> Good rehearsal, everybody. Good rehearsal. Let's do it for real. <laughs>